a KQED television production. Of like sort of old fisherman's wharf. It reminds me of old San Francisco, and that's. Be a little like Jean Valjean with the yeah. teeth or whatever. Um, and worth the calories, the cholesterol, mm. and mm. the heart attack you might have. It was like an adventure, you know? It's probably like <laughs> you're kind of putting on your miner's helmet. It reminds me of oatmeal with a with a touch of wet dog. I did. In a hail. I always tell people when they say sommelier, sommelier, you say it sommelier, so som l yay. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by Check Please Bay Area is proudly sponsored by the Law Offices of Daniel Fetter, providing legal representation on a contingency basis for over 20 years to thousands of Bay Area employees in disputes with their former employers. From wrongful termination to discrimination and sexual harassment, Daniel Fetter and his team provide support and solutions to employees and other injured persons seeking resolution. More information at dfetterlaw.com. IRG has thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG, online at marblecompany.com. Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2014 Subaru Forester are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Donate your car to KQED's Vehicle Donation Program to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by CARS. Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, technology consultant and cookie dough entrepreneur Omar Mamoun combines work skills with his love of food and dining. A committed member of the food community, he volunteers at the mission-based nonprofit kitchen La Cocina. Now that's putting his energy where his passion is. And Spanish-born Rafael Loparena was educated in Mexico. Now retired, he has plenty of time to visit family south of the border. Traveling back and forth for mom's cooking, sampling all the way, makes him an expert on Mexican cuisine. Salud. But first, executive assistant Pauline Stavaris possesses strong opinions. Her generosity in sharing them has her dubbed as the godmother of food knowledge by family and friends. She loves the farm fresh, ingredient driven menu and local wine list at her favorite spot in Healdsburg. It's called Zinn Restaurant and Wine Bar. We're an American restaurant with a southern accent. My name is Jeff Mall. I'm the chef owner of Zinn Restaurant and Wine Bar in Healdsburg, and my partner is Scott Silva. Scott and I have known each other since nursery school. Our families were farmers together in the Central Valley. We both ended up at University of San Francisco in the hotel and restaurant program. We knew that we wanted to have an American restaurant, and we were opening in Healdsburg, which is kind of the epicenter of Zinfandel production. And at the time, Zinfandel was thought to be the only native American wine grape. So we started Zin in 1999. Zinfandel wine is basically a casual wine. It's good for barbecues, and you find a lot of the flavors that work well with Zinfandel in my cooking. When we started our farm, the term farm to table didn't exist. We've been growing our own ingredients for over 12 years now. I still enjoy getting up in the morning, going to pick. I really enjoy starting all of my crops from seeds. Whether it's eggs from our chickens, honey from our bees, the breads that we bake in-house every day, and the bacon and the hams, or produce from our garden. I think that when you come to Zen, you're getting a real taste of the homegrown and the homemade. All right, Pauline, this place has been open since 1999. I mean, it's been around quite a long time in the restaurant world. Right. Yeah. Have you been going for a number of years? I actually first encountered them when I would go to wineries and they would use them as their caterers. And I said, wow, this place is delicious. So I went there and actually it was a Sunday night that I first went, which they had their skillet fried chicken, which is, oh my word, delicious. <laughs> it's just nice and crispy. I mean, you've got, it's a skillet. So right. everything's better when you use a cast iron pan and it just, it caramelizes and it's a nice crust on the outside where it's nice and crispy. And then the inside is juicy. Any kind of fried meat and fried dough, I'm all over that. Right. For the other night, I actually had the crispy duck leg, nice and crispy on the outside juicy and tender on the inside, just like how their chicken is. Right. And it had dirty duck rice, which is so good. <laughs> so there's like pieces of duck breast in there and duck, it's like almost like the confit, but it's a little bit fried. Right. 
bacon in the creamed cabbage. Wow. And a lot of people are not a creamed cabbage fan, but right. it's delicious. We tried the uh, crispy duck leg too, and I agree with her. The crispiness was there, was delicious. I'm used to eating cooked rice, but this one had built-in flavors that were just deep and delicious. The only little problem I had is my duck leg was slightly overcooked. But overall, that dish was excellent. And Omar, you're keeping a little quiet over here. What was well, that? I had a very opposite experience, actually. The chicken was a little bit dry, oh, wow. and it wasn't seasoned very well. I just didn't get the same kind of um, experience that you're describing. So maybe I went on an off night. It could be possible. But some of the other dishes I ordered as well didn't exactly um, hit the mark. What, what did you have? So I start, we started with an appetizer of, it was this artichoke cheesy dip on right. flatbread. Right. The problem is they use this brie that, in my opinion, was a little bit too strong. It didn't really complement the artichoke. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was kind of a iffy start yeah. to my meal. I had also the artichoke, mm. but what I liked most about the artichoke mm -hmm. is that the artichoke was more pronounced. Like, you knew that you were eating artichoke. It was mm -hmm. chopped. It mm -hmm. wasn't mushed up. So the cheese was just kind of like an added plus. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a main star for me, which I'd rather have fresh artichokes straight from Castroville that like I can taste the yes. artichoke. Well, the New Orleans uh, shrimp to me was the best appetizer on the menu because not only the shrimp was tender and succulent, perfectly cooked, but the sauce, the Creole sauce, it was so good that we were all scooping up the sauce with our bread on the table to finish it off the plate. We didn't want to waste the drop. It was fantastic. You know, my chunk of lamb with a uh, red eye sauce, it was just the best entree on the menu for me. And the sauce was out of this world. You know, dipping the bread on the sauce and trying to finish it off and the meat just juicy and tender and it was just incredible. It was very uh, even romantic to be able to sit there and enjoy a delicious dinner. Were you on a romantic you know? date? No, mm. I was with three other friends, but we <laughs> were just uh, delighted to be there because we tried a lot of their dishes and uh, it was very quiet even when the restaurant got full. We were able to talk quietly at the table, not to shout. We just love sharing and uh, commenting about all the dishes we had. It was mm -hmm. fantastic. Did you have the warm asparagus salad? And we had the uh, warm asparagus salad with an egg uh, poach, crispy, and uh, and when the yolk breaks in the salad, it just dresses the mm -hmm. salad mm -hmm. really, really nice. That converted nice. me. I it don't like runny so egg good. yolks. I think oh. it's disgusting, and I, I don't eat like weird eggs stuff. <laughs> other than for breakfast, but <laughs> this also but it makes it better. different. Yeah, it makes a different <laughs> See, flavor I, when I you let it have bacon. I feel that way with bacon. It was, I said that, I was like, oh my gosh. out of this world. The salad was out of this world. Are you taking notes? Maybe I misordered, I don't know, but you know. You just gotta go back with one of us. Perhaps, but here's one thing that really kind of got got me, which was, with the chicken, I wanted a hot sauce, and the lady, or my server, came back uh, 10 minutes later, not with the hot sauce I wanted, but rather their homemade hot sauce, which she insisted was better, and it tastes like burnt leather. Oh, and wow. it was just, it didn't help what was already a helpless dish. Oh, mm. so you, did you have anything to wash it down though? Any drinks? Because I did. They, I had, you know, they've got a hundred wines so the best, by the... the best, uh, I didn't get wine, but it okay. was super hot that day. And right. I had an ice cold beer and that was probably the best part of my meal. What about dessert? Yeah, I had the candy bar. Ooh, and I'm a huge Seinfeld fan. <laughs> and when I could break into that, like mm. Mr. Pitt and cut yeah. my candy bar, I was in seventh. It was delicious. There yeah. was a chocolate nougat on top of a shortbread yeah. and it just had peanuts on top. So yeah. you got the salty again. Salty with the sweet. Yeah, I'm, I'm detecting I, a theme with you, Paul. Yeah, mm. it's Salt you know sweet, maybe it's yeah. a maybe it's a girl yeah. thing. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's delicious. All right, Pauline, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. Great place to go after wine tasting. Relaxed, not obtrusive. Fantastic food, and you can just enjoy yourself and have a great great meal. All right, and Omar. Dry fried chicken, horrible hot sauce. Probably wouldn't go again. <laughs> okay, and Raphael. Love the quietness, romantic. Uh, try that uh, lump of uh, the shank. And the uh, ice cream with a candy bar. I recommend that place to anybody. All right, if you would like to try Zinn Restaurant and Wine Bar, it's on Center at North Street in Healdsburg. The telephone number is 707-473-0946. It's open every day for dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $35.
The Northern Style Fa at Omar's Place on Geary Boulevard in the Richmond District of San Francisco doesn't include a lot of garnishes and bean sprouts. Here, each fa requires its own broth, making it the perfect place for a liquid lunch. You can slurp to your heart's content at Turtle Tower Restaurant. My name is Kathy Pham. The name of the restaurant is Turtle Tower Restaurant. So the restaurant is named after a historical landmark in Hanoi. The story goes that a magical turtle rise from the bottom of the lake and presented the emperor with a sword. My father has been cooking all his life. His grandfather taught his mother and his mother taught him. All the recipes are as old as he can remember and is strictly northern Vietnamese cuisine. My father would like to keep everything as authentic as possible, so he ordered the noodle to be specially made. Traditionally, pho has always been served in Hanoi without basil, bean sprout, or hoisin sauce, as it is still today, and how we serve it here at Turtle Tower. I've been in this business with my parents for 13 years. I now manage their operations. Corey and his wife Julie manages the Gary location. My mom and my sister manage the Larkin location and my husband manages the 6th Street location. All right, Omar, let's talk a little bit about the difference um, between the northern Vietnamese mm -hmm. cuisine, which is what uh, Turtle Tower is focused on, and sort of southern Vietnamese mm -hmm. cuisine. So the southern, as you know, um, style of pho is often accompanied with bean sprouts and uh, basil and, and, hoisin, and, sauce. and hoisin sauce, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Now with Turtle Tower, it's a Hanoi style, northern style pho. And with that style, it's really about the broth and it's super minimal, and the broth is really meant to be the star of the show. And the thing to get at any of the Turtle Tower restaurants is the faga, which is a big bowl of steamy broth that just kind of comes up at, at, at your face with aromas, and it's just super, super delicious, and that's what they're known for, the faga, it's the chicken pho. We ordered three different fa's, mm -hmm. you know, the number one, what I think is the most famous, they the have faga. The faga. Uh -huh. We ordered the number three that has the uh, raw and uh, cooked beef in it. Mm -hmm. And we ordered the number eight. The number eight that has the Cabernet marinated oh, beef. Wine. The red wine. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I found number one and number three to be very similar in flavor as far as the broth goes. Mm -hmm. The noodles and the, and the dish do not give any flavor. It, the broth was very hot and it cooked the beef right away. Mm -hmm but uh, it was just cooked beef, no flavor. We had to season the plates with the soy sauce or the hot shirasa sauce or whatever right, else they had on the right. table, uh, sliced jalapenos, except for the uh, marinated beef and wine that uh, had its own flavor that was a little bit different. The beauty is in the simplicity and the, the broth is just so beautiful and it's really just, you could really taste all the flavors of the anise and the ginger come through and that's really all you need. You don't really need you much more You wanna grab flavoring. the sriracha and just kinda load I it I mean, in. maybe a little bit <laughs> if you need heat. <laughs> yeah. See, Pauline I is very quiet I over there which is I making me nervous. I didn't taste star anise, I didn't taste ginger. Mm -hmm. I got the, um, I asked him, I said, what do you recommend? And he goes, fuga, and I go, really? Mm -hmm. I go, come on, I go, I'll eat anything as long as it doesn't kill me. Are you just saying that because I'm not Asian? <laughs> I go, I said, what do you eat? And he right. goes, get the one with the giblets. I'm like, done. <laughs> so nice. I get the one with the giblets. I do like the wider noodles in Northern right. Vietnamese mm -hmm. cuisine. They're easier to They're handle. They're a little silkier, mm -hmm. a little thinner. Silkier right. and mm -hmm. everything like that. So I said, I go, just give me the jalapenos on the side. I'm not gonna touch it because I just wanna taste that broth. And I wasn't getting that. And I was a little bit disappointed with that because of course I'm looking around the restaurant and everyone's slurping it up, and I'm like, I'm not tasting that. And I tasted my friend's one where she got the rare beef, mm -hmm. and my other friend got just the plain old fuga. And I said, why, I'm just not getting it. If they would have sliced my giblets, because I was mm -hmm. getting whole giblets, if they would have sliced my giblets where I would have gotten giblets in every bite, I think that also it would have been a little bit different of an experience with my pho. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get that. I had to put the hot oil, I had to put sriracha in it. And it was just, I was kind of bummed out. I was like, and I love pho, especially right. pho for lunch. Right. I, it might just be that I prefer the spiciness of Central and South mm -hmm. 
Vietnamese well, and the other cooking, condiments. And, and the other condiments and right. everything like that. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not big on putting hoisin in my thing. Right. I like mm -hmm. tasting, mm -hmm. I broth. like tasting broth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like right. simplicity yeah. of mm -hmm. things, right. but I just wasn't getting it they from there. It just seems like it's the same broth for every uh, soup yeah. plate, and mm -hmm. they just add either meat or chicken or whatever, but uh, to me it tasted very much one note. Yeah. I don't uh, think so. Kind of no, broth. they're different broths. They're region. different yeah. broths, uh, the definitely. Broth. definitely. I mean, this place is an institution. It's been around since 2000. Everyone knows about it. Right. It's a right. thing. You know, the Fuga, right. maybe you guys had off experiences. I don't know. The other thing that I ordered and discovered was this catfish marinated in turmeric. It's served to you in this cast iron pot that's kind of elevated, and below the cast iron is this flame that heats it up and sizzles right. the fish. On the side, you're served with green onions and dill, and then at the end, it's this really beautiful sort of broth that's almost has a curry-like kind of texture to mm -hmm. it. This thing, I tell you, was such a pleasant surprise. It was so good. The flavors are so clean and the, the fish kind of crisps up and then you... I'm hungry now. Oh, it's I, so, I so, so, so I would have gotten that because I'm normally more uh -huh. of a pescatarian, but it's, I was looking for sure. shrimp sure. or crab, which is indicative of northern Vietnam. Well, I had a, an experience with spring rolls that uh, they were almost frozen. They were so cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that made them all almost tasteless. Which they serve cold, yeah, right. Yeah, but they seem to be like they had made them a uh, long time in advance. I liked the spring rolls. It was, mm -hmm. it was, it was fresh for me, and I mm -hmm. liked it because they didn't have lots and lots of noodles in there, which right. that was good, and it could be because I was there on the hottest day of the year, practically. <laughs> what about value? Because that's, yeah. that's a good value. I yeah. mean, you're getting a nice big bowl of pho for like, what, $6.80? Six right. Six, seven dollars <laughs> the most? All right, Omar, this is your right. spot. Give us a quick summary. Super traditional northern Vietnamese food, bang for your buck, definitely go anytime. All right, Pauline? Um, there's other Vietnamese places that I'd much prefer in the city, but if I'm going to go back, I'm going to try something like what Omar said for the catfish. It's definitely a bang for your buck, but I wasn't too impressed. Okay, and Rafael? Yeah, uh, me too. I think it's a good value for your dollar but I will definitely not recommend it to anybody and I won't try to go there again. All right, if you would like to try Turtle Tower Restaurant, it's on Geary between 21st and 22nd Avenues in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-221-9890. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $17, cash only. Some call it tequila, others like myself call it nectar of the agave gods, an ancient spirit unlike any other. Make sure you're sipping 100% agave tequila, made from blue agave grown in the state of Jalisco, Mexico. These enormous plants are harvested by men named jimadores who carve out the hearts or piñas. The piñas are roasted to extract agave juice which is then distilled into tequila. The three main styles of tequila are categorized by the aging process. Those aged less than two months, and you'll know because they're clear, are called blanco or silver. I like to use blanco in mixed drinks. When aged in oak barrels between two months and a year, the tequila is named reposado, which means rested. This is my favorite style. It maintains the freshness and flavor of the agave, but still has character from oak aging. When aged more than a year, you get cognac-like complexity in Añejo tequila. Now, this ring is made from a chunk of the Tequila Volcano, for which the city of Tequila, located in the heart of Jalisco, is named. I think I'll kiss the ring to remind me of my last trip to this picturesque, potent place. You won't find chimichangas and burritos on the menu at Rafael's place on Bridgeway in Sausalito. Only the true flavors and traditional dishes of Mexico. That, combined with a good wine list and a tequila selection that boggles the mind, compel him to drive miles to dine at Copita Tequileria y Comida. I happen to love Mexican food, and after writing the tequila book, it was really logical to open up a Mexican restaurant. I wanted food that was light and fresh. I wanted the authentic flavors of Mexico. I'm Joanne Weir, and this is Copita. I happen to love tequila. When we started, we had about 60 or 70 tequilas. At this point, we have over 100. I really have put together the dream team, and I couldn't be happier. First of all, Gonzalo Rivera, my executive chef. Ryan, he's the GM. All the cooks are Mexican, and they're fabulous. My name is Gonzalo Rivera, and uh, you're at Copita Tequileria and Comida, which means uh, tequila and food. We use all the traditional chilies, spices, herbs, just the way we use in Mexico. Try to translate what I ate as a young child into our, our dining room. I use recipes from my grandma, my mom, and aunt, and I collaborate with Joanne. With her palate, which is great, we always come to one recipe that's always solid. 
After a meal at Copita with the wonderful authentic flavors, I love seeing people go out the door with a smile on their face. And of course, a couple of margaritas doesn't hurt either. You've been going to uh, this place for a while and you drive, I don't drive you? You drive to go I there. I've been there almost since the day it opened, uh, over and over. Mm -hmm. It's a great uh, place to go to on any day of the week. They do offer an incredible selection of uh, tequilas. When you go for tequila, you get this incredible tapas of Mexican food and the quality is unbelievable. It's just uh, over the top on And it's Joanne everything. Weir, who and is a noted Weir. chef and, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and, uh, and fantastic uh, chef and cookbook author. If you don't TV. drink tequila, then you can order the Joanne Weir Chardonnay that she produces. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, an award-winning wine as well. And cocktails. And, and cocktails. They, they do have cocktails. They do, mm -hmm. Tequila cocktails. Right. Uh, you know. Give me one of the dishes that you, it's your go-to dish that is so authentic that you feel like you're in Mexico. Well, I think the birria de chivo, mm -hmm. which is uh, stewed mm -hmm. Meat. They're so tender and juicy and succulent with a cup of the broth of the meat itself when they cooked it in the barbacoa style mm -hmm. with all the vegetables and herbs and, and salsa and everything. It's just like being in the heart of Mexico eating that dish. I ordered you, the you same thing. You both I, said it. You both were like, yeah. oh. I, I ordered the same thing, and the difference with that period is you know, I live in the Mission District. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm surrounded literally by taquerias. Right. And the difference with this video is that it was so beautifully presented and you could just tell what quality right. that went oh, into. That's the number one thing yeah. that they focus totally, on. Totally, totally. Yeah. And it was just well, so, you know, so they good. They also use the baby goat, mm -hmm. not the large mm -hmm. goat, because mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the large goat, the older do uh, goat is very tough. Totally. It has to yeah. be yeah. real young. It yeah. was delicious. Mm -hmm. And I've had birria in Guadalajara with my michelada, which they do a michelada <laughs> right. That birria was phenomenal. Now, I really wish that they would have wouldn't have made three tacos for me with right. it. I wish they would have just given it to me with maybe just one made so that way I can do it myself and have their oregano with, with mm -hmm. that you normally totally. get with it. I just didn't expect it to be right. in taco forms. But with that said, I love tacos. I have a yeah. blog right. about tacos. And the, f and the flavor was fabulous. And the flavor was fabulous. fabulous. So whatever, yeah. you put it on taco form, whatever. It's still good. You mentioned right. tacos. Yeah, yeah. You, we had four different tacos. Mm. Tacos al pastor, mm -hmm. the pork belly tacos, mm -hmm. the Kobe beef mm, tacos. You know, mm. one of them that you'd probably never heard of before is the fried oyster tacos. Huh. Right mm -hmm. in polenta mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and deep fried, mm -hmm. put in a taco with a tangy sauce. Oh. It's just you crunch mm -hmm. and it's a, mm -hmm. an explosion of flavors mm -hmm. in your mouth. You know, you <coughs> just can't go wrong with any taco. And even more yeah. of a testament to tacos is the fact that their tortillas are handmade and just super yeah. good. What other dishes did you have? So I had the ceviche and that was super beautiful, super Wh which fresh. Which one did you try? Uh, the mixto. That contains some lobsters, some scallops, and maybe some... Um, sea bass. Yeah, and it was just so, so good. Super fresh, right. and just really bright and beautiful. and it, Spicy and tasty. No, yeah, but not overpowering, right. you know? And you just scoop it up with some chips and just crunch on it. It's so, so good. We had the papas bravas. That's the best. They were phenomenal. The avocado they crema on the outside. The they sliced the jalapeno in They the jalapeno and they fried them. I was like, I am in heaven. That's and what you want to take to the movies for popcorn. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have an order to go over there. And my friend had the, the rotisserie chicken and a lot of people don't seem to understand. It's like, yeah, you see it on the menu. That's actually very authentically Mexican. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was rubbed with the guajillo chilies, mm -hmm. which are fantastic. And that's actually what you use to make right. bozole, which I didn't see that. Right and you roast them right there. It was great. The one thing that I do wish is that each dish was priced just three dollars less. Mm -hmm. right. I think that. Do you, do you agree? Yeah, You're shaking I head. agree. You just and have to be mindful of your wallet and know that this is not your average Mexican restaurant. There's no right. rice and beans here. No, 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 no. And I think that's actually where the value is. The value is in the authenticity, yeah. mm -hmm. the fresh ingredients. Absolutely. And you definitely have to go for more of the authentic dishes. Mm -hmm. What you know. about milkshakes? <laughs> oh, well, now you hit a very religious spot <laughs> because they have a dessert that is the Oaxacan chocolate milkshake that is spiked with tequila. Yeah. And they serve them with these little Mexican wedding cookies that have a little spike of chili pepper. Oh, you know? wow. It's truly a drink of the gods. I, I had the limuelos for oh. dessert. It was delicious. Yes. They were so light and fluffy. They were small, but you know, it's good enough to just pop mm -hmm. in your mouth and just end your meal with them. And they use a flan sauce, mm -hmm. which had coconut in it. Mm -hmm. 
I could have just looked that entire play. All right, the, right. give us your uh, summary. This is a well, uh, Copita is a tequileria presence uh, with a wonderful uh, array of uh, tequilas, but you'll come back and stay for the food over and over again. And it's a great value for the high quality and of food that they serve. All right, and Omar? Super authentic Mexican food, uh, great tacos, could be $3 less per plate, but I'd definitely go again. All right, and Pauline? This is real deal Mexican, and I love it. And I'm going to go back. I'm just going to make sure that uh, my wallet is prepared. <laughs> <laughs> and th that's OK. I mean, it's a fantastic, fantastic experience. Milkshakes for all. <laughs> yeah, milkshakes for everybody. Right. All right, if you would like to try Copita Tequilaria y Comida, it's on Bridgeway opposite Anchor Street in Sausalito. The telephone number is 415-331-7400. It's open for lunch and dinner every day with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $35. So I want to thank my guests on this week's show, Pauline Stavaris and Zinn Restaurant and Wine Bar in Healdsburg for New American Southern Fare, featuring homegrown produce and house-made condiments. Omar Mamoun and Turtle Tower Restaurant in San Francisco, where Northern Style Pho takes 15 hours to make and fish dishes astonish the taste buds. And Rafael Loparena takes his hat off to Copita Tequilaria y Comida in Sausalito, where tequila, wine, and authentic Mexican cuisine thrill his palate. Don't forget to visit our website at kqed.org to add your comments on today's episode. You'll find more details on all the restaurants featured, and you can watch or download a whole show. My notes on the wines we're drinking today are there too, including information on this Napa Valley wine from Madrigal. And you can follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Don't forget to join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Yes. Woohoo! This show is available in high definition, on demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... Check Please Bay Area is proudly sponsored by the Law Offices of Daniel Fetter, providing legal representation on a contingency basis for over 20 years to thousands of Bay Area employees in disputes with their former employers. From wrongful termination to discrimination and sexual harassment, Daniel Fetter and his team provide support and solutions to employees and other injured persons seeking resolution. More information at dfetterlaw.com. IRG has thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG, online at marblecompany.com. Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2014 Subaru Forester are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Donate your car to KQED's Vehicle Donation Program to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars. KQED Television Production.